you want a kid to just never experience pain and just be a kid and run and have fun and be free. Right from the beginning, we knew that the severity of her curve was not going to be corrected with cast and or a brace. Lauren came to me when she was three years of age and she had a very severe scoliosis, which is a curve of the spine. The curve was so severe that it is highly likely, if untreated, to eventually cause her lungs to fail. How are you feeling overall? The curves tend to worsen. They constrict the volume of the chest and her ability to breathe. And children who have very severe curves die at a young age. What could I have done? What did I do wrong? And I've learned not to ask those questions anymore. You know, I've learned to, to continue on this journey and to continue with her and, and um, just keep fighting. We treated her with casts, where we would change a cast every two to three months to get the curve at least under some control and get her to a little bit older age before we did surgery. She was put into a waterproof cast. There was a quality of life there, no restrictions at all. She was running, jumping, skipping, playing, uh, keeping up with everybody. She was able to go to school with the help of my father. We could not have done this had it not been for him helping. Our plan was to place in what we call growing rods. And the growing rods attach at the top part of the curve and then down below the curve to the spine. And they have a connector in the middle. That rod requires surgery every six months. You need to go in and lengthen it as the child grows. The rod would grow with them. You end up with issues with the children needing many anesthetics, multiple surgeries, more risk of infection. Every day it was on my mind, it was on my heart that we're going to have to go through surgery every six months, hospital stays every six months. It consumed me at times. Surgery is traumatic for children. Uh, it's very hard on them. The children are very upset. We had to keep pressing on. If this was the journey that we needed to be on, then let's battle on. We're going to do what we need to do to give Lauren the best quality of life we can. Lauren, look at the butterflies. We had placed her in traction prior to the surgery, which was halo traction. It consists of putting a halo ring around her head, which has some pins which attach to her skull, and it allows us to pull traction upward. If you look at her spine before, you see that she has a fairly severe curve. By applying the halo traction over time, we were able to get fairly good correction. It allowed Lauren particularly to get better lung function because we opened up her lungs and also allowed her nutrition to improve, which made her surgery itself much safer. She went in for halo traction on a Monday. By that Friday, I had to already go and get her new dresses because the curve had come over, she's getting taller, she's you know able to breathe better. My husband and I kept asking her, Lauren Bell, does your back hurt? How do you feel? I feel fine. Why do you keep asking me? So we transitioned to home and school after being discharged. Fortunately, during this time, the FDA approved a new device, which is a magnetically controlled growing rod, which will hopefully prevent us from having to go back and reoperate on her to do the lengthening. He was so excited, and uh, he took me through the process of it, what it was called, um, and the wonderful things that it would bring. We can use a device on the outside of her skin with her completely awake and without pain to do the lengthenings on her. With this new rod, it just changes, it changes everything. So this is the magic growing rod, and it consists of a rod which is going to attach to the fixation points in the child's spine, and it also then has a magnetic motor here, and then a length in here where the rods are together. And then as this motor is driven by the magnet, it expands. So it allows us to stretch this rod as the child grows, both to keep the curve under control and to keep up with the growth of the child. We have a device uh, which is on the outside of the child, and we are then able to use that and program in the amount of length that we want to do. It's a life life-altering experience for not only Lauren, but our family. You're doing a great job, Belle. Her first lengthening will be done under anesthesia because they need to take the halo off. Everything comes off in June. Three months from that time, she'll have a lengthening again. However, that's done right in the doctor's office. Just like a normal doctor's visit, she gets lengthened and we're on our merry way. Call me if there's trouble. 
This is going to allow us many years of not having to reoperate on her. Lauren, you look good. Your x-rays look good. Okay. I think your position looks really good right now. Dr. Sanders is phenomenal at what he does. I think the ability to use this device at the Galisano Children's Hospital here at the University of Rochester is a superb opportunity and a real great benefit to children who have these difficult to treat problems. Down the road, the quality of life is going to be amazing for Lauren, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. The really inspiring part of Lauren's journey is that it just doesn't get her down. She just perseveres through it.